Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Hardy Memorial United Methodist Church. We want to welcome you here this morning, and it is such a beautiful day. It's good to have you all here today, as well as those worshiping with us online. For our announcements today, we have a 4th of July planning meeting in the Fellowship Hall right after church. So if you'd like to be part of the work team, uh, just go right on down there right after church. Uh, we have guitar lessons in the youth building today. The prayer band will meet on Zoom tonight at 5 o'clock. Now, this is really important. United Methodist Women Picnic is not today. It is tomorrow. So uh, just wanted, in case you saw it in a different, I think we put it as Monday the 6th. And today is Sunday the 6th. So for our OCD people. We messed up. That's right. God bless our little hearts. Uh, we have yoga this week, and uh, David DeLauder's Bible study, A Minute After You Die, is continuing on, and Thursday Women's Bible Study is continuing on. Lakeview Camp. If you want to go to Lakeview Camp, you need to sign up really soon. Camp is almost full, and from what I'm hearing from the camp directors, if uh, uh, they have to have uh, they have to have counselors. And right now, the number of counselors are limiting the number of kids who can go. So if you want to go to summer camp as an adult, we are welcome to, we will send you. <laughs> have you all been as an adult before? <laughs> it's a lot more fun. <laughs> so uh, Independence Day celebration is July 4th. And for those, uh, just as a memory of today, today is the anniversary of D-Day. If you remember that at all, I didn't know if y'all knew that today. Uh, the historian in the back row knows. Okay, yeah, okay, so. Well, we are ready for the light of Christ. this morning for our call to worship. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart I sing your praise. We bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks for your steadfast love. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the needs of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Remain standing. Would you join me in song as we sing, My Faith Looks Up to Thee?
continue in song. Our next song is This Is My Father's World. children's time with Miss Bonnie and she's going to be on the screen this morning so y'all can just watch her from the screen. Good morning boys and girls glad to see you here this morning. How about let's say good morning on the count of three. One two three. Good morning. I heard that. Sounds wonderful and I'm glad to see you this morning. I have a question to ask you. What do you think of when I say the word family? Hmm, I know. Yeah, family is an awesome word, and it's become even more awesome in this last year, hasn't it? Families can be lots of things and lots of different people. Maybe you're thinking now, since it's summer, you're thinking maybe about family vacations. You're thinking about all the wonderful things you can do with your family. You're thinking about how your family takes care of you and how you take care of them. Thinking maybe about birthday parties, meals, all the different things that we do when we come together. Mr. Paul and I have a family, and then we have then a bigger family, and then we have the family that's you, our church, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. It's our Bible story. Jesus talks a lot about family, and in the Bible story today, Jesus is traveling, and when he gets to where he's going, there are lots of people. There are always lots of people that wanted to hear Jesus. Some were friends, some were enemies. There was always a big crowd. And today there's kind of three groups of people. There's lots of people that want to hear him, that believe what he's saying, that have heard about his miracles, believe he is the Son of God. Then there's a group called the Pharisees, and they're that sassy group, remember, they're kind of angry that it looks like he's gaining power, and they want him to be quiet and go away. They're there. And then his family. And we don't hear very much about Jesus' family, but today in the Gospel of Mark, it talks about his family, his family, Mary and his brothers and sisters. Jesus is the Son of God, but Mary and his earthly father, Joseph, went on to have boys and girls. So Jesus had brothers and sisters that were part of his family that he grew up with. So Jesus probably had a pretty big family, and they're there today. And the reason they come today in the Bible story to listen to Jesus is they kind of want him to be quiet, stop talking so much. They've heard that he's saying things that are kind of getting him in trouble. He's saying things that are kind of getting them in trouble. He's saying things that are causing uh, maybe him not to eat and not, not be healthy in his body, they think. They're, they don't even completely understand that God's taking care of him. They think it's up to them to take care of him. 
and they go to him and they're kind of telling him not to talk so much and to be quiet, to come home with them, to kind of shut it down. But, oh, Jesus has a big message for them and for everybody that's listening. And the two main ones are, I won't be quiet. I have more to say. My mission is not complete yet. And I'm saying, and I'm continuing to do what I've been doing, called by my Father God. And then he also says this, which I think is really amazing. Yes, you guys are my family, but everyone here is my family. Everyone that loves me, everyone that's listening to me, everyone that believes in me, everyone that's going with me on my ministry, they love me. They're with me. They're like my mother. They're like my sisters and brothers too. I love that message because I think maybe Jesus was talking to them, but he's also talking to us. When we love Jesus, we are a part of his family. We are his family for sure. His children, his brothers and sisters, we belong to Jesus when we love him. He's telling us that today. That makes you all, and that makes me, and that makes all of us here today, and everyone that loves Jesus part of one big, beautiful family. And isn't that good news? Let's say a prayer and thank him for it. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these beautiful children that are listening this morning. I thank you for each sweet family that's represented here, and oh, I thank you that you have made us a part of your forever family. May we learn to love you even more and then to love each other as brothers and sisters in your son, Jesus Christ. And it is in his sweet name that we pray this morning. Amen. See you later. Now dismissed if they would like to go to Children's Church. You guys can head on out and we'll have the invitation to communion now. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to be a member of any church. You are invited to God's table. Yeah. Also, as a reminder today, uh, we do have gluten-free bread. If you need gluten-free bread, we have that available for you as well. Uh, just uh, there'll be inside the basket another basket that will have gluten-free available there. This is way too much fun to watch, isn't it? <laughs> and we do have offering today for... Janet, is it 4th of July or summer camp? It's 4th of July. Okay, so to fund 4th of July, uh, you can uh, leave something at the altar rail today. So that's what that offering will be for. You'll see our communion liturgy on the screen. It is also in your hymnal on page 12. Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll make our silent confessions. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
Would you stand with me for our prayer of illumination and our scripture to follow? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as these scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Mark. Chapter 3, verses 20 through 35. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. 
When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Basalabub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whosoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly God, send your Holy Spirit to be here with me as I bring your message to your people. May the meditations of my mind and the words of my mouth be holy and pleasing unto you. Amen. We have a really interesting passage this morning that I think often gets people hung up. There's a particular line in there that I think people fixate on that has to do with the unpardonable sin. Did anybody else notice that verse in there, the unpardonable sin? Uh, And my experience has been that people are really curious about what is it that they can do that will get them into that much trouble. Are you all curious about that as well? I would hope you are. Whenever you read the directions, whatever you do, don't do this. That's an important safety advisory, right? And so here it's, here's the unpardonable sin. But I, I want to put it aside for a moment and tell you, the problem is if we fixate on that too much, we don't see the forest for the trees. We get zeroed in on something and we get hung up too long on it. So I kind of want to take a little bit more of a running start as to what does this mean in the entire context of the book of Mark? So it leads me to this particular point that this is very early on in the book of Mark. And Mark has developed, as Miss Bonnie said, three groups of people out there, right? There's one group of people who are the followers. They're committed, they're there, uh, they are just fixated on what Jesus is doing. There's another group of people, kind of those that are drifting around wondering what is going on. They're not really committed. And then there's the straight up haters. People who really, really are upset with Jesus. Did y'all notice that group? They're they're included in here this morning. Our our Sadducees and Pharisee friends uh, have come and they are very upset with what Jesus is doing. And uh, Ms. Bonnie did point out that they may be upset because he's been dragging off their followers, which would upset them. Uh, They may be upset because what he's been teaching Uh, He he may be upset because he's been undermining their authority, and it might be that they're upset with him because it appears that in some places he set out just to make them upset. Have you ever seen people just set out to make somebody else upset? Have you ever done it? Don't be lying now. You could just sit quietly. So, I mean, what, what, what's been taking place? We're only in the third chapter. But if you, if you take a running look at this, uh, we, we have Jesus keeps running into the Pharisees and Sadducees. Let's just call them the religious teachers. And as he runs into the religious teachers, one of the first experiences he, he, he has is a man who is the paralytic, who he heals, and he forgives his sins first. And the religious teachers say, that's blasphemy because only God can forgive sins. And Jesus says, what? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or get up and walk. And the man gets up and walks. 
So in this passage, Jesus is letting them know who he is. He is God incarnate here on earth. Now, that tends to upset the religious teachers. They're pretty sure that's not what is what Jesus is. Then, then there's another run-in that he has with his disciples and the religious teachers uh, where they are going through a field and they're eating the heads of grain. So they're upset that they're eating at the wrong time and they're not washing. So they're, they're eating on the Sabbath, and which is, you know, pulling is considered working. And, and then also that they're not washing their hands properly. And so Jesus talks to them about feast or famine, that there is a time for a feast and there is time to which we don't eat. Uh, and they get upset at him again. And then we have another run-in uh, just shortly after this uh, that Jesus then heals a man on the Sabbath, which apparently is over the edge. So we, we have just this run-in after run-in after run-in. And so we, we come up to the passage right about here. Jesus ha- heals a man on the Sabbath. And they come, and what they want to do is they want to destroy Jesus' reputation. Anybody ever do that today? You want to get rid of somebody, what do you do? You kill their name. You got to get rid of their name. So what do they do? They show up and they go, he's from the devil. How do we know he's from the devil? Because he's casting out demons by being a demon. That's, that's their logic. Uh, so they, they spread rumors. They, they cause trouble in this way. And so Jesus tells them what? A parable. He tells them the story that a house divided doesn't work. And then he goes on and he tells them the next part, that when you call God evil, you are in real trouble. That's the problem. They're looking at God himself and they're ascribing evil to God. Whenever That's that's where we really get into a ditch. When when God is doing something and we look at it and we call that evil, that's, that's a real problem. And that's what Jesus is talking about, that there is blaspheming of what God is doing in the midst of them. And he says, you need to really be careful of that. And his family is there at this time. And here's what I think is going on. His family looks at the situation. There are these huge crowds there. And at this time, there had been other messiahs who had come up, and all of them had been killed. And so they saw these large crowds. They saw a revolution coming. They saw the opposition of who was hating them. And they go, you know what? We need to get Jesus out of here before this goes bad. So what do they say? Don't pay attention to him. He's crazy. Literally what they say, quit paying attention to him. He's crazy. We'll just shuffle him out of here. And what does Jesus say to that? Nope. They're not my family. Who is my family? Those who do the will of the Father. That's who my family is. And that that leads us kind of to a really interesting place. C.S. Lewis proposed this. Um, he, He said, you know, you come to, there's kind of three conclusions you can come to about Jesus. He's either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. A liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. It's one of those threes. You can't take the option that Jesus is just a good teacher. And and here's the, the reason for it, is because Jesus claimed to be God. And if he's claiming to be God, Either he is God or he is evil. Uh, Have you ever heard of a religious teacher claiming to be God? How did that go? Jim Jones? Ring a bell? I think the kids are a little bit too young to remember him, but Google it later. To claim to be God is to be crazy unless you are. Uh, the The other choice... Um, was you're crazy, you're a liar, that making you evil, or you are God. Now, was, was Jesus crazy? Uh, I don't think so. What's, what's interesting about this passage is it contains all three of these choices. But my question for you this morning is, who do you say Jesus is? Have you made that choice? Is is he just a good teacher? Because I don't think that's on the table. 
knowingly claiming to be God and not put you in the wrong category. That puts you in liar, deceitful, wrong. And some people will make the claim that the Bible was kind of written and cajoled, but I'm telling you, Jewish people wouldn't do that. And they wouldn't do it in that way. It's not the idea they would have come up with. So those are the three choices. Crazy, God, or evil. What say you? I think we all need to make that choice. It's a decision to be made. And when we make that decision, then if we choose Lord, we choose to follow. Now there's a downside to that. Because Jesus does make some, some definite crazy ideas. I, it, within Scripture, there's some ideas here that are hard. If somebody strikes you, what are you supposed to do? They strike you on one cheek? Turn the other one. Is that really a good idea? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> you see... see at the core of craziness, this is, my, this is Patrick's working definition of insanity or craziness, so you all know where I am. It, you, you fall into that category when your view of reality does not line up with reality. Y'all follow me? There's reality, and if your viewpoint of reality differs from reality enough, then you're uh, crazy. And it's helpful because sometimes in the pastoral line of business, when I'm, I've met people on the street, you do stuff, you finally come to the conclusion, this person needs real help, and it's beyond what I'm able to do. But it has to do with this understanding of reality. And so the claims of religion have to do with what is truth and what is the underlying of reality. And Jesus, being God, brings into focus what is reality. So we have what Jesus tells us to do and what the world tells us to do. And the, and the thing about following Jesus is it is in opposition of what the world tells us to do. And it is, no other easy way to put this, it's a little bit crazy and sometimes bad ideas. But if he is God, it is underlying the truth of reality of the universe. Love your enemy. Wow. What does God tell us? If Jesus is God, he's telling us what? Love our enemy. Turn the other cheek. And, and, and here's an underpinning of it all that, that comes with today's communion. That this man died for our sins. And his death atones for our wrongdoing. That God himself is paying for our wrongdoing. Is that truth or is that crazy? I hold its truth. God tells us and Jesus tells us to reach out to people, to teach and to love. All of these things are in many ways in opposition of the brutality of the way the world works. And we're called to such things. So really two stories, and then we'll have communion. When I was first appointed, I went to Kingwood, Texas, and our choir director, Gary Showalter, just a wonderful man. I love Gary to death, just like one of those really sweet spirits. And there were a lot of days we'd be sitting in meetings, and we'd be talking about doing different kind, kinds of uh, things that we would do in the way of outreach. And there were times when I would suggest we could do this as a radical means of reaching people who don't know, need Jesus, who don't know Jesus. They, they need Jesus. And Gary Showalter, he always had this phrase about it. He'd, he'd look at me and he'd go, well, that's just crazy talk. Reaching out and teaching, that's just crazy talk. Welcoming people, loving Whatever what Jesus called us to do in this radical realm, Gary would always look at him and go, well, that's just crazy talk. But you know what? As, as church people, we have to remember that that's what Jesus calls us to. He calls us to a radical, different life. It's an opposition of the way the world works. 
Jesus, <laughs> he's crazy. Or he's reality. Uh, the, the final story is, it's kind of a cute story, I'm made up, but it's, it's just as fun as always. So as you know, we just had, uh, or maybe you don't know, we just had annual conference. I was reappointed here, no applause necessary, but... <laughs> <laughs> all true. But anyway, uh, uh, a young man had been appointed to his first church, and he got there, and he had been there a little while, and the bishop called to check up on him. Uh, I can tell you that's not true because the bishop doesn't call to check up on you. The district superintendent does, but the bishop called, just work with me, and, and said, how's it all going there so far? And he goes, you know, dear bishop, he said, every day, I am just putting fires out. That's all I'm doing is putting fires out all day long. And the bishop said, son, I sent you there to start them. <laughs> Isn't it the truth? Jesus came to start a fire. May that fire be in each of us. As we come to communion today, may you remember that it is his shed blood and his broken body that makes us whole. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll continue with worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings as the ushers would come forward. Let us pray. Most gracious heavenly God, we come this day, a people whom you have blessed, and now we return to you a portion for your kingdom. Amen. Our communion liturgy will be on the screens as well in your hymnal in front of you on page 13. 
Uh, and I'd like to remind you that uh, uh, we do have gluten-free today if you need that. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will those who are assisting with communion meet me at the altar rail? And also a reminder about the altar rails this morning. Um, they're not where they usually are, and if you try to kneel at them, they might flip over. So I suggest we not. But if you really want to, go ahead. <laughs> the body of Christ broken for you.
Our hymn of invitation today is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Uh, I ask you now, if you are looking for a church to join, a fellowship of people to travel along with, uh, a few people maybe with loose screws, we are here for you. <laughs> Let us stand together and sing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. words as I send you out into a world that will think you crazy for loving people. Do it anyway. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.